Hello, everyone. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. William Grant about his recently published paper, A Multi-Country Ecological Study of Cancer Incidence Rates in 2008 with Respect to Various Risk-Modifying Factors in the journal Nutrients. Dr. Grant is an epidemiologist and founder of the nonprofit organization Sunlight Nutrition and Health Research Center and is the science director of the Vitamin D Council. So let's jump right in, Dr. Grant. Could you give us a brief overview of your study and the results you found? Yes, I'd be happy to. So what I did is called an, a multi-country ecological study. It, this is using data from uh, a number of countries looking at health outcomes, in this case, uh, the, the incidence rates for various types of cancer, and it's looking at risk modifying factors for these cancers, um, again, average for the entire populations for these various countries. Now, um, the, the, what this is, and then these are all compared statistically. So what, the, what this essentially does is say that, say, it assumes that each country is conducting its own experiment its own experiment in, in uh, what they eat, whether they smoke, whether they uh, drink alcohol, uh, uh, a number of other, other factors like that. And then it, it looks at the, the cancer rates in these various countries and asks, well, which, which of these factors are highly correlated with, with cancer uh, risk? Um, the, um, it turns out that there, uh, uh, there are 157, uh, 156 total countries that I could use data from, of which 87 are countries with high quality data. In other words, they, they have real incidence data for these countries uh, for cancer, whereas the other countries, for the most part, they've sort of estimated what the cancer rates are. So uh, the data are from 2008. Uh, that's, that's the cancer uh, incidence data. The, um, now, diet affects cancer uh, with a lag of, of 10 to 20 to 30 years. So I got the dietary uh, supply data from the Food and Agriculture Association organization and uh, looked at and, and, and got data for, for uh, data uh, for, for the food supply 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years prior to the incidence data. Uh, for the effects of smoking, I used lung cancer uh, incidence rates. Uh, it turns out it's really hard to get uh, cigarette uh, consumption uh, data, and since since smoking doesn't affect cancer rates for maybe uh, 30 or 40 years of smoking, uh, by getting lung cancer rates, uh, then I'm integrating the effects of smoking and a few other things such as indoor cooking in places like China or air pollution, uh, which all contribute to, to lung cancer and to other cancers. I uh, used alcohol consumption, I used um, uh, sugar uh, uh, supply, cereal supply, uh, and then I used latitude. Now, latitude, uh, as Cedric Garland has shown in, 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 in Sher uh, Sherif Moore and in his colleagues, and I've been involved with some of those studies, um, lat um, there's much more UVB in, in the um, uh, tropical regions and much less UVB in the polar regions. So you have uh, this, this latitudinal gradient. You have which, which um, uh, since UVB is the primary source of vitamin D and, uh, for most people, uh, this index should, be an in, uh, should help us understand how much vitamin D uh, the various um, uh, countries are making from, from sunlight. So that's the background for the study. Um, so what did I find? Okay, I found that uh, for most cancers, uh, smoking and or consumption of animal products had the highest correlations w with cancer incidence rates. Um, latitude was correlated with maybe nine or 10 types of cancer, uh, alcohol with only one or two types of cancer, uh, sugar was cor uh, correlated with uh, maybe two or three types of cancer, um, but anyway, the, the, the most important thing was that animal products is about as strong a uh, risk factor for cancer as smoking is. And this was a little surprising to me that it would be as strong as smoking, but uh, I think we can understand that um, in that, that um, um, 
uh, animal products uh, have more protein, more fat. They encourage the body to grow. Uh, in fact, if I've been in Japan a couple of times, and I noticed that the older folks are very short, whereas the younger folks are very tall. Well, the older people had a, 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 cal uh, a low caloric intake. Uh, only 15% of their energy came from animal products back in the 1960s, and most of that was from seafood, uh, such as fish. Uh, but the younger folks are eating more of the Western diet, uh, and as they put more of the Western foods in, they grow taller, um, in part because animal products uh, have more, uh, generate more insulin-like growth factor, which makes the body grow, but it also makes tumors grow. Uh, other studies have shown that taller people have more cancer than shorter people. Right. All right. Um, so, Dr. Grant, you mentioned in your study that latitude, um, which is an index of vitamin D production, was significantly correlated with nine cancers, either directly or inversely. Can you further explain those findings about latitude and how does your findings compare to other studies? Okay, what I found in terms of latitude in the high-quality country study, that's with 87 countries, I found that bladder cancer, colorectal cancer, kidney cancer, lung cancer, and melanoma all increased with increasing latitude, uh, whereas on the other hand, cervical cancer, lip or oral cancer, and thyroid cancer uh, decreased with increasing latitude. Uh, in the full set of countries, 156 set of countries, uh, brain cancer and breast cancer also increased with latitude. Now, in terms of increasing with latitude, uh, these results pretty much uh, agree with um, single country uh, ecological studies. Uh, there have been single country studies in uh, Australia, China, France, Japan, uh, and the United States, uh, and Spain, uh, all of which have pretty much found consistently that these cancers and other cancers are, are inversely correlated with the amount of uh, solar UVB or latitude. Uh, some of the cancers that we've also found in the single country studies to be uh, inversely correlated with solar UVB indices include corpus uteri cancer, uh, gallbladder cancer, pancreatic cancer, laryngeal cancer, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, I think that the reason we didn't find latitude uh, uh, correlated with these other cancers is that most likely uh, animal products uh, and smoking are much more important, and they sort of mask the effect of, of latitude uh, or, or UVB or, or vitamin D. Now, it's interesting that there are three cancers uh, for which there was a, 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 um, uh, an, an inverse correlation with latitude. In other words, higher rates of the tropics than in the higher latitudes. These are cervical, uh, lip, uh, oral, and thyroid. Well, lip, uh, UVB is, a, is, is an in, a risk factor for lip cancer, so that's why it's more common in the tropics. Um, cervical cancer and uh, is, is uh, related to uh, virus viruses, HPV virus. So um, people in the tropics seem to have more infectious diseases, so uh, this is not surprising. Uh, thyroid cancer, uh, I'm not sure whether that's linked to infections or, or, or not. I'll go back to the, the ones that increase the latitude. A very, very interesting finding was that melanoma rates increase very, very strongly with, with increasing latitude. Within 30 degrees of the tropics, there's very little uh, melanoma uh, for people living in countries uh, of their ancestral homelands, uh, such as Africa, South America, and so on. It's only people living in Australia and New Zealand who move from the British Isles to those countries and have high UVB doses and don't have skin that's suited to reduce the risk of melanoma by being dark and, and preventing the, the UVA and UVB from penetrating deep into the skin. Uh, they suffer from a lot of melanoma. But for people living in their ancestral homelands uh, in the tropics, they're well protected against melanoma uh, and also other skin cancers. But when the skin pigmentation becomes very light, uh, as people go to higher latitudes in order to be able to make vitamin D, uh, they've lost the protection against melanoma. And so that's why melanoma rates increase with increasing latitude. So 
I would say that this study provides some support uh, for UVB and vitamin D reducing the risk of a number of cancers. Uh, but um, of course, being an ecological study, uh, we want to look at uh, a number of other factors, such as uh, do we know the mechanisms? Uh, have we found it in single country studies? Have we looked at um, the uh, studies, ob observational studies, in which the, 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 vitamin, the serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels or the vitamin D levels, circulating vitamin D levels, uh, are they correlated with, with reduced risk of cancer, uh, both incidence and mortality rates, um, and so on? But I think uh, that there's a, in, in terms of causality between UVB, vitamin D, and cancer, uh, what the medical system is looking for is good randomized controlled trials. However, as Robert Heaney with, with uh, Grassroots Health uh, has, has pointed out, most of the randomized controlled trials to date with vitamin D have been poorly designed and poorly conducted. Uh, to do good studies, you've got to start with a population with very low vitamin D levels, give them enough vitamin D to raise their levels to where it's going to be effective, and then find an effect. And, and very few of the st studies to date have done that. Uh, and even a lot of the studies underway uh, still do not uh, have all the, the recommendations from Robert Heaney's um, uh, recent paper uh, included. Um, so what would be your recommendation about lifestyle changes that could reduce an individual's risk for cancer based on your study? Okay. Um, to reduce the risk of cancer, uh, people, for, first of all, should not smoke. I mean, that, that's well known. Secondly, uh, they should consider eating as much in the way of, 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 of vegetable products instead of animal products. In other words, uh, good quality grains, vegetables, fruits, legumes, nuts, um, uh, fruits, and, and that sort of thing, and try to keep uh, e reduce the amount of, of uh, meat, especially red meat. Um, eat some, possibly eat some fish in moderation. It's a good source of omega-3 fatty acids, but unfortunately also a source of mercury. Um, Dairy is probably beneficial. It has calcium. Um, uh, again, one one is to try to keep that uh, a bit in moderation, and of course, uh, get vitamin D either from uh, being out of doors, uh, without wearing sunscreen, but without burning, without getting any kind of uh, reddening. Um, and, and 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 most people have to supplement with vitamin D. Um, the, the target uh, serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D level is above 30, more like above 40 nanograms per milliliter, up to about 80, 60 or 70 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, I keep mine around 60, 65 nanograms per milliliter and take four or 5,000 IU per day. So uh, the, the exercise helps too and keeping one of the weights down. Weights down. So uh, watch, don't smoke, watch the diet, get the vitamin D levels up, uh, exercise, keep the weight down, um, and maybe try to avoid uh, pollution, uh, air pollution or, or indoor pollution. Great. Thank you. That's going to be very helpful to our viewers. I appreciate your, your recommendation on that. Um, is there anything else you would like to tell our viewers today? Well, um, follow the vitamin D story at Grassroots Health. Uh, for those who want to do more research, uh, go to pubmed.gov. Of course, the sister organizations, uh, Vitamin D Council, Vitamin D Society, and uh, Vitamin D Wiki are also very, very, very helpful and have a lot of useful information. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Grant, for joining us today and to share these important findings. If you are interested in reading this paper, you can find it in the most recent edition of the journal Nutrients or on PubMed.gov. Thank you all for watching and continue spreading the word about vitamin D.